that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the light of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice of every kind of impurity. But this is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be removed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness, and holiness. Thanks, Kate. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your, the way your truth penetrates our hearts. Lord, it is uh, an exhilarating experience to encounter you in your word and to be led closer to at the same time, it can be a, a painful experience as we realize the error of our ways. It can be humbling. It can be um, it can be something that cuts deeply. But Lord, we want to be open to that. We want to be open to your word penetrating our hearts. For your word is the word of eternal life. And if it does not penetrate our hearts, it does not bear and improved at all. So we pray that you would penetrate our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I enjoy watching baptisms. Um, I, I enjoy the symbolism of them. The, the idea of being dumped under the water symbolizing death and then being raised to newness of life. It says that we're baptized with Christ. That we, we experience that. Uh, I enjoy the, the symbolism of being washed of our sins, of being made clean. Baptism has some tremendous symbolic value to it. And it's interesting because it ties right into where we are at in our study of Ephesians today. Um, and if you come here every week, you know that we're just kind of working our way through the book of Ephesians, and so sometimes things just seem to fit together. Because this passage of Scripture is going to talk about putting off the old and putting on the new, just like in baptism we're ceremoniously washed, we are put to death and then made alive again. In this passage of Scripture, which, which Pete read, he uh, if you were listening, you heard some things which, which run counter to our culture. Our culture tells us that everybody's a winner. Our culture tells us that everybody uh, is good. Scripture teaches something quite the opposite. Scripture teaches that we are rebels against God. Scripture tells us that we are standing under the wrath of God. When we begin reading passages of Scripture that, that speak of how we are to behave, how we are to love one another, and what that love looks like, and we suddenly realize that we haven't been living like that, the room grows very, very quiet. This is what scripture says. We are guilty before God, children of wrath. In this passage, it, it speaks of being alienated from the life of God because of the hardness in our hearts, being hardened to God and his ways. And it takes nothing less than a miracle of God to change that. The gospel comes, and, and we listen to it, and we hear it, and we respond 
that response to God is a miracle given the hardness of our hearts. In verse 20, it says, This is not the way you learned Christ. This way of, of being callous towards God in living in sin. You didn't learn Christ that way. Verse 21, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Paul is saying here that there is a chance, there is the possibility that you heard about Jesus but didn't hear the truth. That you didn't hear the fullness of the message of Jesus. There's a chance that what you heard was this. You are a sinner, guilty before God. Jesus came, died for your sins, so now accept his forgiveness by grace. That's what you heard, and you said, who wants to go to hell? Sure, I'll accept Jesus. But that's not the gospel. But that's not the gospel. If part of the gospel, is part of the gospel, but it's not the message of Jesus. It's not the message of Jesus. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news. Jesus called people to follow him, to give their lives and change their lives over, to follow him and to live according to his ways, not the old ways. And so, the call of the gospel is to leave your former way of life, accept forgiveness for having lived that way, and now live according to the way Jesus wants you to live, in fellowship with God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, living lives of righteousness and holiness and incredible love. That's what the gospel is. That's what he's saying here in this passage. Assuming that you've heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, verse 22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. To put off your old self. Understand that? To give up your former way of life, which is corrupt because of deceitful desires. Well, what exactly do we need to give up? What is it about our former way of life that we need to get rid of, to put off, to take off, like you take off a pair of clothes? Well, what is it that we need to take off? And then, what is it that we need to put on? Because Paul goes on to say, put on the new self. And there's a danger here that we may think, okay, pastor, give us the list of things we can't do, the things we need to put off. Here's the list. Blah, 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 blah. And then, here's the list of things you have to do. Da, 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 da. And we'll start trying to avoid the don'ts and do the do's. And we'll miss the gospel. And we'll miss the gospel. Because the gospel is about having a relationship with Jesus, not about keeping lists of rules. This is why Paul says, put off the old self 
and be made new in the spirit of your minds, in the spirit of your thinking, and then put on the new self. And we're going to see as we go through this summer that Paul's going to begin dealing with some very specific areas of life and what it really means to put off the old self in that area of life, be made new in the spirit of our minds, and put on the new self and live the way Jesus wants us to. That's what we'll be talking about this summer, a new way of thinking. But the danger is we can try to come up with a list of rules, a list of things that you have to do or not do. That's the danger. And it's a very real danger. Because the answer to the question, what do you have to put off, is Everything. Everything. That's what you need to put off. And if I just made a list of four or five things, I might not mention the thing that you need to put off. I can come up with a list. Let's see. Let me make a look, make sure it's a good biblical list. Okay, here's the first thing. First thing you need to give up. Quit killing people. Okay? Stop, stop it. Jesus ran after him. 
say, oh, no, I didn't mean it. No, no, don't take it seriously. I just meant that symbolically. No, no, he didn't. Jesus turned to the disciples and said, how hard is it for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? Paul tells us, if you heard the truth, if you heard the real gospel, it included putting off your old way of life. It included leaving everything to follow Him. Leaving everything to follow Jesus. Some of us are trying to follow Jesus and then hang on to the old life. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Last week, Pastor Nick had you in, in Psalm 40 talking about being lifted out of the miry clay and set on solid ground. Great song. But if you've been in the bog, if you've been in the miry clay, you're covered with miry clay. When you get out, don't you want to take a shower? You know, don't you want to put on some new clothes? Why would you want to hang on to the old wiry clay? No, you want to be clean. You want to be made right. You want to be made whole. You want to be, you want to be, you want to get all the gut out of your hair. In the same way, Paul says, if you heard the gospel, it is the call to leave everything to follow him. Everything. Why? Because he is totally worth it. Amen. He is totally worth it. They won't let me in the house. And there's a chance that they'll send people to beat me up. There's a chance they might even send people to kill me. So what's the advantage of becoming a Christian again? What, what starts to happen to you inside? Is, is there part of you that says, oh, yeah, you're right, maybe, maybe you shouldn't become a Christian. That, that'd be difficult. Or do you say, no, Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth it. Jesus is the pearl of great price. He's the treasure buried in the field. He's worth everything. Is that what we really think? Would you leave everything to follow him? Or are you hanging on to things? Well, I'll follow Jesus as long as I can have a nice house to do it in. I'll follow Jesus as long as I have air conditioning. I'll follow Jesus as long as it makes my business successful. I'll follow Jesus as long as. And the call of Jesus again and again and again is follow me. Leave it all and follow me. 
It's what you were created to do. Anything else is a distant second place. Follow me. Leave everything behind to follow me. Leave your reputation. Leave your job. Put it all aside and make me the number one priority in your life. Put off your old way of thinking and follow me. Paul tells us in Ephesians 4 that our former manner of life is corrupt through deceitful desires. It's corrupt through deceitful desires. We have desires, things that we want. We want comfort. We want comfort. You know, do you want the hard chair or the comfortable chair? Do you want hard wooden pews or nice, soft, comfortable chairs? We, we like comfort. But those desires will lie to us. They are deceitful. And suddenly, comfort becomes an idol. Comfort becomes the thing we're worshiping. And we need to lay it aside. We need to lay it aside. For some of us, it's being in control. It's being in control. And we need to lay it aside because Jesus has to be in control. Let him be in control. Oh, but, okay, Jesus, you're in control, but can I just be in control of my life? I'll follow you, but let me control everything. Says, no, 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 no. One of the missionaries that we, we listened to um, was serving in what we call a creative access country. Uh, typically countries where you cannot go as a missionary. Typically evangelism is very frowned upon, if not illegal. So sharing Christ there um, can get you in trouble. We call these creative access places. And we'll have a creative access worker here uh, later this summer in, in August sharing about what, what she's doing. Um, but this particular creative access worker was serving in the Middle East and had a couple of, of good ministry experiences and God kept moving her. And every time God said, oh, I want you to go to this new city, she protested. She protested to God. God, you want me to go there? The last time people were there that were followers of Jesus, they got thrown out of town. You want me to go there? And God's response was, you know, I do terrible ideas really, really well. But she had to give up control and say, okay, God, I'll follow you. She had to give up comfort and say, I'll follow you. She put off the old way of life and was willing to put on the new way of life. And that's what God is calling us to do. That's what God is calling us to be as a people, is people who put off the old way, put on the new way of life, to be made new in the way we think. Why would we do this? Only because of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the good shepherd. He is the righteous judge. He is the, the great I am. And so when he says, come, follow me, we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. For 11 chapters, Paul talks about all that God did in Jesus. 
And then in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, because of his great mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve the good and pleasing, perfect will of God. We lay it all down. We lay down our old lifestyle and say, Jesus, I am yours. Teach me. Teach me. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to lay it down? <laughs> I remember this is going to sound kind of, kind of silly, but, but I remember when I was in college, talking to a, a friend of mine who was a follower of Christ. And he said, I think I'm finally willing to give everything to Jesus. Everything. <laughs> and he said, you know what's been holding me back? I said, what? My guitar. Bunch of wood, some metal. That's what's holding him back, his guitar. He said, I'm finally willing to surrender that to Jesus. And like I said, you know, it doesn't seem like a very big deal, but to him, it was. It was the go and sell all you have moment for this particular guy. The thing that I've noticed as I've gotten more and more gray in my beard and in my hair and is it doesn't get any easier. That young college student didn't have much. And the older that I get, I find within me the, the greater tendency to want to hang on to what I have. And so this message of Forsaking all to follow Jesus is not for the young only. It's for the old as well. Because the temptation is with age to think that you've got it all figured out. To say, been there, done that, don't need to be radical anymore. And Jesus says, come. Follow me. Follow me. Leave the comfort of your house. Leave the proximity to your grandchildren, whatever it is that you're holding on to. Come, follow me. Put off your old self. Be made new in the way you think and put on the new self, the one which values Jesus above all and following him above every other goal. This is the gospel. Repent, believe the good news. Because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and his resurrection, you can be reunited with God and walk in the fullness of the Spirit in the life he desires you to have the one which you were created from before the foundation of the world to walk in. That's the gospel. And it's glorious. What is holding you back from saying a complete yes to Jesus? To saying, I surrender all even fill in the blank for you. Amen. Most of you know that Janet and I, uh, several years ago, moved to France. And um, we had made the decision to move, 
hadn't announced it to our church yet up in northern Minnesota. And we're thinking, you know, we don't know how long we're going to we're gonna be gone for years. So we have to get rid of everything. Sold all of our possessions. Sold our house. And that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, honestly. Um, you know, when you've just purchased a new sofa and now you're basically paying somebody to take it off your hands, uh, it's, it's difficult. And uh, we were going through the, the process of, of thinking through selling all of our stuff. We hadn't announced it to the church yet. Nobody knew what we were contemplating. And somebody came to me and said, you know, in Matthew 19, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, sell everything and come follow me. And the guy looked at me and said, Jesus wouldn't actually ask somebody to do that, would he? And I said, oh yeah, he might, he very well might ask somebody to do that. But we have to be in that place of being willing to say, yes, Jesus, I'll go. Or even to Jesus, yes, if you want me to stay, I'll stay. I'm yours. I've cut everything else off. Amen? John, could we, can you play, some, can somebody back there play some music? Is that possible? I like these unplanned moments. Let's just um, take a, a moment or two of quiet before the Lord and surrender all to him. Surrender all. Maybe there's an area of your life where you've been hanging on, your reputation, um, your job, your family, your retirement account, uh, maybe it's some area of sin in your life, um, maybe it's pornography or sexual sin, or maybe it's an addiction of some type, and, and you need to get right with Jesus. I want to invite you to, to give it to him. and. If it helps you to give it to him to, to come forward and, and pray up here, we want to take time to do that. All right? Because the gospel is you can be forgiven for hanging on to things that aren't Jesus, for pursuing desires that are not his. You can be forgiven. So I invite you to let those things go and receive forgiveness and newness of life in Christ. We'll just take a few minutes and then I'll close the service.
sent us from this place as fully devoted followers of you. Lord, may, may there not be any roots um, holding us to our old way of life. Instead, may we be fully planted, fully planted in your kingdom. May our roots go deep down into your word that the life-giving spirit might flow through us. And may we bear fruit for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to thank you very much for coming. I want to remind you that Rebecca has got a a fun time planned for us uh, on the um, St. Croix River. So you can see Rebecca. She's back there eager to sign people up for a time of canoeing and maybe capsizing in the river. I don't know. So <laughs> thanks for coming.
So uh, I'm going to ask Bridget four questions, um, just so that she can proclaim this stuff uh, to you guys in front of everybody, and then, uh, then we'll go through the, the back okay. okay. Bridget, do you recognize that you have sinned against God and were dead in your sins? Yes. Do you affirm that you have repented of your sins and have become reconciled to God? Do you affirm that you placed your faith in Jesus in his literal and bodily death and resurrection for your forgiveness of sins, to make you alive with him, and to reconcile you back to God all by his grace? Yes. And do you affirm that you desire to follow Jesus as your savior, teacher, and king for the rest of your life? Yes. So I have you So Bridget, since you have uh, proclaimed your faith in front of everybody and made that decision to, to follow Jesus, I will now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, 